Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Who is Who in America on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Today we are very fortunate to have with us on today's program uh, Mrs. Anita Mainbach. Did I get that correct, Anita? Very good, Mainbach. Mainbach, good. Close enough. So, Go good, good, good. So, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you with us on today's program. And for our viewers out there, Anita um, has a very interesting background, a very successful background. Presently, she is the project developer um, with Building Bridges. She is an author, she has received many awards. Oh, very interesting background, a lot of achievements. So stay tuned as we talk to Anita Meinbach about her career, her background, her profession, and uh, her present activities with building bridges among children of different cultures, different religious background, etc., etc., etc. Benz, the single largest specialty retailer of residential and office furniture, consumer electronics, home appliances, and household items in Trinidad and Tobago. At Fens, we offer a large selection of high-quality products, honest and reliable service. We are passionate about serving you, and we're proud of the standard of excellence upheld by our knowledgeable staff, friendly delivery teams, and dedicated customer care associates. Visit Fens first, your friendly furniture appliance and electronic dealer since 1960. For all of your forwarding and freight shipping needs, we at Trend Forwarding International are committed to product delivery. At Trend Forwarding, we have the much needed experience, professionalism and due diligence in freight forwarding, shipping and cargoes. We deliver with timeliness and precision. You can reach out to us at our Caribbean office in Trinidad and Tobago, telephone number 868-624-6250 or our Florida USA office at 305-887-9750. So, Anita, welcome to the show. I'm going to stay away from having to pronounce the main back. Huh? Please do. In case I, I, I mess up with the pronunciation. That's fine. And thank you for having me. I'm really honored to be here. It's really a pleasure. I know that you got a very, very uh, busy schedule uh, with all your achievements uh, in, in life. But uh, before we get to building bridges with children of different cultures and uh, different faiths etc tell us a little bit about yourself because i'm sure our viewers worldwide would like to know who is anita what <coughs> anita does what she did how she achieved all these achievements i know you got a doctorate from um, the university of miami school of education and human development um, you got a, a master's degree um, yeah in education you major in education with gifted education again all the nine yards about education you have 20 years of experience and you have been working with Miami-Dade County Public School System for over 20 years in a wide variety of uh, areas and um, different projects and programs so tell us a little bit about yourself maybe where you're from uh, you're originally okay. from miami and how you achieve all these uh, uh achievements okay well thank you um actually i was born in new york city and uh, my family moved to miami when i was eight years old mm -hmm. but um you talk about me teaching for so long. Actually, my career in education started when I was about five or six years old in the basement of my house in New York City. Wow. I used to, <laughs> I used to have a blackboard in the basement and I had these dolls and I would invite the neighborhood children to come over and I would tell a story using my dolls and then I do things with the, the chalkboard also. So my dream in life actually always was to be a teacher. Okay. And 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 uh, I had two dreams. <laughs> My first was to become a teacher, mm -hmm. and the second one is I always wanted to write a children's book. 
So uh, my first dream came true. I graduated from the University of Florida and I started teaching first in Atlanta and then we moved, then I came to Miami from Atlanta. Um, having gone to Atlanta for four years to kind of have a different area to be in other than Miami and then moved back to Miami. And so I taught for Dade County Schools for, like you said, over 20 years and taught and I was an educational consultant for the county and had a lot of different jobs, speaking, engagements, um, that education. And um, my other dream was to write a children's book. And that came true two years ago, a book my son and I wrote 20 years ago was published uh, called What Luck. So both of those dreams came true. And in the interim, uh, other than teaching at the University of Miami, um, teaching, excuse me, at Bay County Schools, I then went for 14 years and taught at UM. And I taught children's literature, language arts, and classroom management there. So basically, those are the main things. And I've written, as you said, I've written many books for educators, many of them having to do with language arts and bringing books into the classroom for children and integrating it. And um, I did two books on the, on the Holocaust. Um, my family is very connected with the Holocaust. And um, my husband was born in a DP camp. Mm -hmm. uh, his family were, were Holocaust survivors. And basically these books though are for teachers and educators to use to teach the lessons of the Holocaust, about standing up for one another, about making, you know, that things are happening to your neighbors, your friends, whatever. You stand up for any human being, you stand up for right. And so um, that's basically what I have done so over tell the us, years. Tell us a little bit about um, the your show on um, Channel 10, uh, that famous Kids Beat magazine. Kids Beat magazine. Tell us about um, that, how it came about, how you got in that program, what you actually did. I mean, you are a specialist when it comes to kids and education, plus you have that f that 14 years, is it 14 years, uh, professor at um, UM? University of Miami. Uh -huh. University of Miami, that's phenomenal, listen. To be deep in education as you are, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. And we are really, really, really fortunate to have someone like you um, with you. us on the show today. So tell us about this magazine and uh, Kids it Beat magazine on Channel 10. You know how life happens that somehow you meet people you never expected to meet? Yeah. And connections just form. Like you, meeting, meet, meeting you. Oh, um, thank you. They, they think they have, you know, they just, and in, in, in Yiddish, I, I think it's Yiddish or it's Hebrew, it's Beshir, it was meant to be. And some things are just meant to be. And I had a second cousin who was one of her closest friends, mm -hmm. was a producer with Channel 10 uh, in uh, Miami. Yes. And um, we happened to have the opportunity to meet and she was telling me about this new program that she was going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And it was called Kids Beat Magazine. It was like a magazine program that they had back in the day, small vignettes on different stories. And she asked me to be the associate producer. So um, my first thing is I go into the studio there and I got to meet one of the heads of Channel 10. And I don't tell this story much, but you're, you're a great listener. Um, he, he said, we have music for an opening song. And he played it for us. And I sat there and I wrote the lyrics for their song. Mm -hmm. And it, it just came. It's like, it's like crazy. And um, anyway, so my main job there was to come up with ideas for scripts. And they had a, like a pool of stories and programs that had already been done in different places. So going through those and picking out the ones we thought would be most appropriate. And I got to interview. We had a host and a hostess. Um, they were in their teens, teenagers, right. who um, were th the main people on the program, introducing each of the different vignettes. And I got to write the vignettes. So basically, um, that's what I did for the show. And it was, it was a thrill to do it, actually. Wow, that would have been a lot of fun, right? was and one we did a couple of local ones too the one i remember the most we did at the humane society uh -huh. because i wanted children to know that there are so many animals that need homes mm -hmm. and they could also go there and help take care of the animals which is a wonderful thing to do and my son was a young boy at that time and uh, he got to be in the program so 
isn't that interesting isn't that interesting wow yeah because you know when it comes to kids beat magazine and kids show on television kids really are glued to television when it comes to kids show i mean as much as social media is out there and a lot of kids are with their phones and ipads and you know yet when it comes to these kids shows on television they are always on on it you know what i mean so i could imagine you were that special idol in those days on this program right <laughs> <laughs> it's impo- it's important for them to have shows where they can learn and take the knowledge that they get you know to engage them and inspire them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's what we hope to do so tell us a little bit about some of those different activities that you were involved with when you worked with Miami Dade County Public School System. Uh, different some activities. of the things I know you're a teacher, you were educational consultant, you were curriculum writer. You know, tell us a little bit about your experience, what it was oh. like. I mean, uh, that, that's going back in the years. But, you know, what you would share with us on this uh, show would definitely motivate other teachers. You see the point I'm getting at? Yeah. You will, you will okay. motivate so, other teachers, other, okay. you know, viewers worldwide who are in education and teaching. They would want to be another Anita, you know, how you attain, <laughs> how you attain all these things. Tell us. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit of an overachiever. I hate that word because you can't overachieve. You do what you can do. Yeah. Um, I told you I always wanted to be a teacher. And it's funny, over the years, my husband would say, well, why don't you go into law? I said, because I love teaching. Then a few weeks later, he'd say, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? I go, I love what I do. Mm-hmm. If you love what you do, first of all, and as a teacher, there's so many things to love about it. Um, you never work a day in your life. First of all, it is. It was a joy when I think back, because you know I'm up there now in years. Over my life, I have always loved what I do. It's teaching is not the easiest job in the world. It is definitely not. Yeah, it's not. But I can't think for me. I could never have gone into medicine. That was not for me. I can't. I was a candy striper. You know, working. I used to do um, volunteer work at a hospital. And you go in and you fill up the water pitchers. And the first day on the job. Um, I went in and filled up the water pitcher, and the woman was crying. She was in pain, and I walked out, sat down, cried, and they put me <laughs> into um, making milkshakes <laughs> <laughs> at the hospital. So um, I wasn't for me- meant for medicine, but I needed to do something. If, if you're the type of person that cares about others, teaching is the most fulfilling, rewarding job because you start with young children. And if they can remember something that you've taught them, something that inspired them to do good in the world, that's what we're here for. Yes. And um, what's the best way to do it than to be a teacher? I wish the world would recognize, though, how important education is. Because um, I would love to see more and more people want to go into education as to some of the more the base, the the more rigorous sciences, because we need them in. The classroom teaching our kids also you are and, so uh, right anita because um you know uh, you know in, in 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 the islamic teachings we have a saying al elmun nurun which means that knowledge is light knowledge is light and when you teach people you enlighten them you brighten their life and you give them the light of life so they can see a bright future because they're educated it's all about light and guidance i love that i love that image it's beautiful it is so nice you know you 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 brighten your life with with light and they can see you know there is a famous saying that when a person has wealth the person got to guard and protect their wealth that person but when you have knowledge your knowledge guards you and that that's what's important there's so many yeah so, so that's beautiful. So you have been gifted with a very special thing from God and the, the light of the world. Unfortunately, today, um, nowadays, in fact, uh, you know, a lot of people are just about achievement of materialistic things in the world. 
Um, without being educated, nobody has a problem with attaining materialistic things in the world. But, you know, when you're not educated, it's a miserable life. It's a miserable life. You can become so miserable by not understanding people, not understanding cultures, not understanding life and not understanding the world because you may have the world in your hands, but you may not understand the world. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I get very frustrated sometimes with education and the way it's being delivered. Yes. Um, I, I'll tell you this. I ran through the school board for Miami-Dade County. Uh -huh. And there were 11 of us running. And um, one of them was had had political background. Two of them had political backgrounds. And I remember going to the dean at UM and saying, you know, um, I'm running for school board. Can you give me some suggestions? And he said to me, how much money do you have? And I told him, he says, you'll never win. And then um, I went to the dean. I shouldn't tell you this, but that was the same question and the same response. And so, you know, people need to realize that we need to put people into positions of leadership, school boards, where they have the knowledge to help make it better. And I'm telling you this because the teachers out there, you said a lot of them will be listening to this. You need, yes, they have basic curriculums that they want you to use. But you can enhance those. You can make them meaningful. You don't need to just use a textbook. Use great literature. Use life stories and history mm -hmm. to bring those things together. To teach what's really important in life right. with, within the context of the past and knowledge of what we need for the future. And I think that's what gets a lot of teachers today. I know I talk to a lot of my former students who are so frustrated. They want to know what page you're on and why aren't you on a certain page with your students? Well, not every student is ready for that page. And so teachers out there, do what you know is right for your students. You'll teach it all, but give yourself the power to teach and, and reach them and the way that you know is meaningful and will inspire them. So you I are so right. Helps. You are so right, Anita. And a lot of people just teach for the salary. It's not about educating children and educating others, not just children, but others. Anyhow, we have already be, been talking for approximately 15 minutes. Do you see how time goes? Time goes. I know we got to get to your project of building bridges. Uh, among children of different um, backgrounds. But when we come back after the short break, we want to talk a little bit about some of those awards that you have received. I saw that you have received a lot of awards. And we also got to talk about this uh, Building Bridges project that you are on. But um, we need to know some of the awards. And I would like you to share that with our viewers so they can... Um, they can be motivated to receive some of the similar awards you have received, but they got to do the good work that you have done. They got to do the good work that you have done. The awards, it, are not, the awards are nice, but honestly, it's, it's, the, it's doing what we do. That's, yeah, the, that's yeah. the award. Yes. When those kids come up to you and give you that hug and say thank you, that's the award. That's the award. You are so right. So to our viewers out there, we will... Return after the short break and continue this conversation with Anita, a person with a very interesting background. For those of you who have just tuned in, she's a specialist in education, many, 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 many years of experience with Miami-Dade Miami County School Board, with the University of Miami, etc. So stay tuned. When we come back, we will continue this discussion with Anita. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmat TV for kutbas, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, Verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim, Ya ayyuhar Rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir Rabbik, 
wa illam taf'al fa ma balagta risalatahu very deep allah tells the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to spread the message of the quran and he told the prophet and if you do not spread the message you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger so you and i are followers of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we can afford one quran help us join in distributing the quran so if you can't afford one quran do it Three dollars, ten Quran, thirty dollars, a hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Who Is Who in America on Al Hikma TV twenty four seven online. Once more, we are talking with uh, Anita and Anita I gotta learn this uh, uh, because I need to give credit to the name Mainbach did I get it now? Mainbach it's Mainbach 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 interesting Anita Mainbach uh, we had a wonderful conversation with her before we went on the short break and um, I'm sure viewers out there would have benefited a lot uh, from her teaching background, her educational background, and her career and profession in, in education. Uh, so, Anita, tell us um, a little bit of some of your awards. I see that you, um, USA Today, you received and uh, you were honored as on the all-teacher team. And there was one that was very interesting. Honored by Miami-Dade Commission as a Woman of the Year in March 2002. And then you got the Miami-Dade County Teacher of the Year in 2003. I mean, these are great achievements. In America, you know, it's not like some other country somewhere in the world. But in Miami, in America, you get an award in Miami-Dade. Such a large population, so many teachers and to get the the county teacher of the year award that is fantastic so tell us a little bit about these awards how did you get them how it happened we share this because i want to repeat it's all about motivating other people your education okay. your career will motivate other people to want to attain success by doing the good things that you did in the field of education I will say that never in my wildest dreams did I ever expect those kind of things to happen. Wow. I, you know, I did what I did because I loved it, as I keep saying. And so they were gifts and I was, I was overwhelmed to mm -hmm. receive them because I never, ever expected it. Um, I will tell you about one of the awards, though. Tell us. that um, I started and how it came about and one I'm most proud of having received after I after I started the award. Um, I, when I was teaching at the University of Miami, one of the things besides the courses I taught is I would go into classrooms and I have students who are doing their student teaching. Mm -hmm. And so I would go into their classrooms, watch them teach, give them advice, that kind of a thing. And I walked in one of the classes and there was a large picture on the wall of one of the students. And next to it, it was kind, the word kindness. So it was the student of the week for kindness. Right. And, and for kindness, which I said, that's wonderful. So after um, the student had taught, had taught and we had our conversation together, I said, well, what things did that student do, especially that that student got the award for kindness? She said, I don't know, they just elect some, they just choose somebody as a, for a kindness award. And I said, there's so much to kindness. You just, uh, you know, and then she did a story in, in, with that same class. And it was about a mailman who was retiring and he was going from house to house. And all the people in all the homes were rushing out to greet him, to say goodbye, to thank him, to give him gifts. So I said to her in that book, you never mentioned why were those people coming out to that mailman and doing those things? Why did they love him so much? And we got to the idea, well, maybe he was kind, that maybe if it was raining, he brought the mail to their home, whatever it was, that they wanted to show him that they cared because he probably was a very kind, caring man. 
Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, we need to have an award for kindness. And I know that kindness is its own reward. So I know that sounds kind of, you know, but anyway, um, and it is. But there was a book called Maniac McGee. And it was by Jerry Spinelli, who is a very, very well-known children's book author. And in the book Maniac McGee, this child, Maniac McGee, they called him because he ran through the town like a maniac. He brought two sides of segregated parts of the town together in mutual kindness and friendship. So to honor what that character did, I thought that would be a perfect name for the award. So it was a Maniac Maniac McGee Award for a Legacy of Kindness. And it was the only award at the school that the students nominated somebody and had to give the reason why. And so we did that year after year. The first year, the winner was a cafeteria worker in her 70s. Back then, I thought that was old. Not anymore, <laughs> anyway. And she was being awarded um, because she would not le let a child leave there who was hungry. She made sure the children who didn't have their lunch had lunch. Um, the second year, the principal of the school was awarded. And our children were awarded too. And I got, it, I, was, I got the award on the third year. And I think that one meant the most to me that that's, the students selected me for the Maniac McGee Award. Actually, I have it right behind me. You want to see it? Yes, of course, of course, of course. Um. We got to be real here, man. Let, let let our viewers see it. I don't know if you can read it. Wow. But we it's could, the Maniac McGee could. Award for a Legacy of Kindness. Isn't that so beautiful? And what's, what's wonderful about it is they've continued to do it year after year. And I remember one year, sadly, um, our uh, the counselor I had, was no longer there, and they invited me to come back. And uh, she subsequently died, but she was awarded the the award, and they had me come back. And but the students got it as well. And that's you don't have to be the best athlete, you don't have to be the best scholar, but you can be kind. You can always be kind. Oh my goodness! What a beautiful award. It's not about not just about something but just being kind you know your kindness your kindness uh, led you to get in that award of kindness and i think that is so very humble of you you know it, it reminds me of all these beautiful um, sayings you know there's a famous saying which says that when you're kind to people on earth god is kind to you and you developed that program or that uh, whatever it was to um, guide people towards kindness, to, to encourage people to be kind. And um, I know the award is not just, is not, is not, the award, you know, just a plaque cannot give justice to your kindness. That's just a symbol. But right. when you encourage people to be kind, it's you know it's definite that God will be kind to you, and um, kind and merciful to you for what you do. I think that is so interesting nowadays. You know, Anita, and I mean I I should be saying Doctor Anita. I, I apologize no. for that. I know no. that you are so humble to it. I should be saying Doctor Anita with all those degrees and achievement and your doctorate, etc. But a lot of teachers nowadays, um, in today's time, in today's time, unfortunately, you know, you, you don't see kindness anymore. You see a lot of arrogance, you see haughtiness, but I'm sure that your students would have learned a lot from your personality, your kindness, your humbleness. That, that, that goes a long way. You know, the, 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 the theory... And the book knowledge is one thing, but the act of being loving and kind. Uh, when I was studying Dr. Nita, and I have to say Dr. Nita, forgive me for that, right? I mean, I know, don't worry, we, 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 we have to respect your, your, your status and your t uh, achievement. You know, when I was studying, I always remember this. I read a proverb, and I wish I had it still. I was about 17 years then. It says... A great teacher, and I hope I remember it, and you have caused me to reflect back 
when I was 17 years and I don't want to I can't remember how many years ago that was right <laughs> you know it says a great teacher is not that person who got a great amount of degrees and knowledge but a great teacher is that person who motivates a lot of people to to, to become great students isn't that interesting but it's so true yeah a great teacher i had not, that teacher it, in sixth grade who did uh -huh. that for me who took this kid the kids made fun of because i was short and kind of heavy and he made me feel special wow and i will never ever forget about forget him you see you see the point we're getting at and I, you know we could talk about this with someone like you because you have that background and and i'm talking to you uh, Dr. Anita, and it sent me right back to when I was 17 years, which you were talking approximately almost 45 years ago. I remember that saying, a great teacher is not someone with a great amount of degrees and diplomas, but a one who can make a great amount of students, motivate people to be students, motivate people to study, to want to learn. You know, sometimes you have a teacher and the subject that they teach, you, you hate the subject. And it's more or less because of the way the teacher teaches it. And then you have another teacher who teaches the same subject and you learn to love the subject. So it's like education. You learn to love to learn and to be educated. So they are teachers who motivate people to want to learn and want to um, gain a lot of education and uh, God Almighty has blessed you with that personality when you mention about your your kindness award that you motivated <laughs> people to get oh uh, my God that is so interesting I've never I've never I mean uh, I've never really heard of someone telling me it's all about the, the, the insist on the knowledge which is important don't miss my point there eh? but just to encourage students to be kind that is something that is lacking in society today. What do you think about that? On that point, what do you think about kindness and love and respect among teachers and students? What do you think about that today in comparison to the days when you were teaching? It's funny. In the days when I was teaching, it never really came up at that point either uh, that I know of, you wow. know, when I was when I was younger. Um, I, I don't see it through the years being something that's really talked about or considered. Hopefully, people treated each other with respect and kindness all along, but it was never anything that that they did in a basis like the award that I felt needed to be done because I felt that it wasn't being mentioned or talked about enough, that people didn't think so think about what they were doing sometimes with how their words would hurt, how their actions would hurt, how they isolated other people, the bullying that went on. So um, I, I think I'm seeing a little bit more lately with anti-bullying than I saw when I was a kid. Mm. I don't know if you saw it differently, but much many more programs coming, being developed about um, anti-bullying and things like that, those are becoming more, I see them more now than I saw them when I was growing up. Well, is it because it's more in existence nowadays? Yeah. Or? I, 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 I think there was always bullying, but it seems to have reached a different degree. Mm -hmm. More hate more animosity again it's going to get us to the project and hating people that they don't even know you know right. too much too much of that and just just too it's hard it's hard to express but I, I mean i was bullied as a kid when i first moved to miami um, um i know knew nobody i came to miami i was it was april in the second grade there was one month left of school uh, there were some kids in my neighborhood. I didn't know them. I'd go out to see if I could play with them, and they all said no. There wasn't room for me to play rope, jump rope. There wasn't room for me to play throw, catch ball with them, right? 
So my mom would keep saying, well, why don't you take an end in the jump rope? And maybe they'll, you know, so mm -hmm. I went to do that. And the next thing I remember is some, a girl was sitting on me. So we must have gotten into a fight, and I don't even <laughs> remember it. But wow. I do remember the feeling of isolation that I felt when I came to Miami. It still gets me choked up. And I was eight years old, and it still affected me to this day. And I think things like that that happen to you in your life also do it. But it was a different kind of bullying. But kids don't realize the harm that they do when they name call, you know, that it stays with the person forever. And it seems to be getting more intense here of late. Maybe there's more publicity. I don't know. But it just seems to me that there's just so much, so much of it. Yeah. And we are all human beings. And I was brought up in a family. And I don't. I hate to say this. You know, it didn't matter. It not. I to say it. It doesn't matter what color a person was. It didn't matter what religion the person was. What mattered is who that person was inside. And that's how I was always brought up. And I just don't see that happening today. I see people being isolated for their color, for their religion, for their culture, or the language that they speak or don't speak. And I see just more and more. I don't know if it's the media focusing more on it. And if it is, it's good that they're focusing on it, but terrible that it's happening so much. You are so right. You are so right because unfortunately, um, I'm sure the, the respect and the love that teachers and students had among themselves in those days, you know, it's a whole different kettle of fish nowadays. It's a whole different kettle of fish. And uh, you, you, you made a good point. It's a lot of hate. It's a lot of malice, a lot of prejudice nowadays. It's very unfortunate, very unfortunate. But anyhow, we have been talking for another 15 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, you know, have gone in this second um, segment. So when we come back after the short break, we're going to get into your present project. I wanted to leave that for last because mm -hmm. that's the whole thing. And I can now understand, you know, we have spoken a couple of times, but now after listening to your awards and your kindness award and your educational background, and I mean, and your teaching profession, now I sort of understand a little more, a little more or even better as to why you are so excited about this project of building bridges among children and people of different cultures and different faiths, etc. So when we come back, we're going to talk a little more about that, why you came up with that idea, uh, what it is all about. We want our viewers to know. We want our worldwide viewers to know what you're doing and what you plan to get uh, achieved and what you have done already on this Building Bridges project among children. So for our viewers out there, stay tuned when we come back. We will continue this discussion uh, with uh, Dr. Anita, who, as we have said before and many times, a very, um, I think she's a very chosen person by God, especially when she spoke about her kindness and her teaching career and the love and affection she had with students, teachers, etc. in her profession and career. So stay tuned. We got a very important topic to discuss with her when we come back. Inshallah, God willing. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for kutbas, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya ayyuha rasul Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik Wa illam taf'al Fa ma balagta risalatuhu Very deep Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To spread the message of the Quran And he told the Prophet And if you do not spread the message You did not fulfill the mission of the messenger So you and I are followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars, ten Quran, 
thirty dollars a hundred Quran three hundred dollars Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Who is Who in America on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. For those of you who have just tuned in, we have been talking to Dr. Anita, a person with a wonderful educational background, not just book knowledge, but someone who, you know, emphasized a lot and love and kindness and affection in her teaching career so welcome back to the show dr anita thank you you're welcome Glad to be back <laughs> yes it is a pleasure it is a pleasure and um i i feel very privileged to get in this conversation with you so as i were mentioning you know i know the reason why tears would come to your eyes when we discuss about your kindness and your background it's because you did what you did from your heart and when you reflect back to that, it must bring tears to your eyes because it happened for real. It was not fake. You know, nowadays we're all about a lot of fake things, uh, fake, fake, fake. But God blessed you. And, 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 and again, God bless us that we are on this show talking about your new project. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how you came up with this project of building bridges uh, which is an outreach program with <laughs> children of different religion, different ethnic background, etc. Well, building bridges was kind of like the perfect storm, how, how it came to me. Mm -hmm. It didn't come all, all at once, but when it did, it all came together. So I'll, I'll take you back a few years. Um, while I was still working at the University of Miami, I was asked to work on a project to help teachers in the Jewish day schools um, teach more about Judaism to their students. A lot of them weren't Jewish and didn't really have the background. And um, I didn't know how I, what I was going to do at that point. What was I going to do? What was I going to teach them? And so I was at a conference. And um, because I love children's literature, as I mentioned before, there was a, a young woman there and she had like six or seven young children. And I was telling her about a book called The Rainbow Fish that I had just recently read with my grandson, who was about five or six at the time. And um, it's a book about a fish covered in beautiful, beautiful scales. But he's very haughty. And none of the other fish liked him. And one of the other older fish said, well, maybe if you were a little nicer and shared, uh, they would like you better. So The Rainbow Fish decided to share and at the end of the book is a picture of the rainbow fish and all the other fish swimming together happily and getting along. So I told this to this young girl and she goes, what? What kind of book is that? She says, and I go, what do you mean? It's about sharing. And then all of a sudden it hit me. And I was embarrassed that it took that long to hit me. But that book was about you don't give up who you are. You have to keep what is the core of you. And you can't change to please other people. You have to be the best you you can be, period. Brilliant. And this Brilliant. fish gave up essentially who he was to be accepted. So I said, okay, I'm going to take these wonderful books that have wonderful values, and in this case, the Jewish values, but we all know they're not Jewish values, they are universal values. Again, kindness, respect, oh, all, all the things that are what, what constitutes all of our religions. Of course. That's essential to all of us. And so I took all of these wonderful children's books and created lesson plans, brought in music and art and things like that, teaching this book and the universal values that they, they taught. So that was the first thing that happened, okay? And that's important to it because of what I did with building bridges. Um, then the second thing, second, third, and fourth things that happened is we had between 2018, 2019, we had the Tree of Life synagogue killings. Yeah. We had two mosques in New Zealand in 2019 and people were killed. Then we had also the, um, the neo-Nazi they say the neo-Nazi demonstrations in Charlottesville in 2018. And I remember watching it and hearing people yell and scream hatred. 
And I said, I bet they don't, I bet they don't even know any of the people that they hate. They probably never met a black person in their life. They certainly never met a Jewish person in their life or maybe a Muslim or whatever. If they didn't look like they looked or go to the same church or wherever they went to pray, they were marching in hate. So that was the second thing. And then what topped it all off were the words of Martin Luther King. It just came back to me like, well, I, I, I don't know how it all happened, but all of a sudden it came to me. I didn't have it perfectly at the time, but I had the general gist of it. And the quote is that men hate because others because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they can't communicate with each other, and they can't communicate with each other because they're separate. And that was it. And I said, we have to find a way to bring people together from different diverse backgrounds who would never have had the opportunity to meet each other, and we have to start with the children. Because I think, you know, there's a book from a, South, a song from South Pacific, You've got to be taught to hate and fear. People, you know, do you know that song? Uh, People whose eyes are different shade, whatever. And you've got to be taught before it's too late, before you are six or seven or eight, to hate all the people your relatives hate. You have to be carefully taught. So all that came together in the mixture. And I said, look, we have the technology to do this. Yeah. We have Zoom yeah. technology. Now, this is before the pandemic. But we have Zoom technology. We can bring kids together. They can talk with each other through Zoom in classes, in their own classes. And why not have them start talking about children's books? Teachers use literature in their classes. The teachers can determine together, the teachers who are paired, what books they would like to do. The students can talk among their, themselves in their own classes, but once every couple of weeks, they could meet with this other population of students and discuss the book connected to their own lives, their own realities, their own hopes and dreams. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did. And I started off uh, 2018, 2019, before the pandemic, a year and a half before the pandemic. I started off with a Muslim school in Sunrise, Florida, a Catholic school in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and a Jewish day school in Boca Raton, Florida. And we started with fifth grade classes in each of these schools. And the teachers met to discuss when they wanted to meet, what book they were going to use. So now they used a book that came with their own, that went along well with their own um, curriculum. So it wasn't one extra thing that they had to do. It didn't cost anything because they were reading these books anyway. And um, they decided they would meet once every two weeks for 45 minutes. And they started the sessions off with things like boundary breaking. It's just a, a strategy where you just ask questions like, what's the most beautiful sound you've ever heard? Or if you could go back in time, who is one person you'd like to meet? And each child, they would get the question and each child in the room would give their answer in both sides. And then at the end of doing a few questions, they would talk about things like, Who's one person in the class you'd like to ask another question to? Or who sounded the most like you? Those kind of things to get to know and, and get familiar with each other. So we did that the first time. And then every time we met, they did that for 5, 10, 15, about 10 minutes, actually, before they discussed the book. Right. And little by little, as they discussed the books of literature and made connections to their own lives, they started realizing how much they had in common. And it was really a wonderful, it was wonderful, the results, and I will share the results with you in a minute. Um, but it was very interesting to see how comfortable they were. And oftentimes, like one person would say, "We're it's our holiday this week, we are celebrating. Mm -hmm. And they would talk about the religion they were celebrating. And then the other school would say, you know, we have religion, we do certain things like that. There were similarities. Or we have a holiday, you have Christmas, we have Hanukkah. And they would see a lot of the different similarities at times. And then they got so comfortable that one of the, the times, the students in the Muslim school, one of the times I was at, at, um, it's at a Donna Klein Jewish Academy, I went there and watched in person. And they asked the students, 
Do you ever feel uncomfortable wearing the hijab? Am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes, totally yeah. correct. What? I said totally correct. <laughs> okay. And um, and they asked the boys, because the boys wore a head covering very similar right. to the head coverings that they wore in synagogue. Yeah, the kippah. And so, the, uh, right, kippah. And the girls said, some of them said, yeah, we, sometimes when we go into store, we feel like people are are looking at us and we get uncomfortable, which says a lot. It, you know, it made me feel very badly, but it was very honest. Mm -hmm. And the boys said, no, it doesn't bother us at all. But they felt comfortable enough that not only, they, they, and they had birthdays, they celebrated, and little by little, and even a semester, it made a huge difference. So I started a pilot study with them and it was going to be a formal study done with the University of Miami which we never got to fruition because of pandemic. Right. But we I did give an informal survey. And I'm just going to read this if it's okay. Yes, but with before you, you get okay. bef before you get on that, I you know, yeah. I I must mention a very interesting point in this whole project that you have. I love that 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 vision that you have which is called a culture of kindness. And it brings me back to what we were talking before. I mean, it's so interesting that you brought up you you have that 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 terminology or you have used those words, a culture of kindness. You know that includes everybody in humanity. Doesn't matter what religion, what faith, whoever you may be, wherever you may be, a culture of kindness. I mean, that includes even the dogs and the cats and the animals. Yes. Course. Isn't that so wonderful? Um, I love that. I lo that's why I told you, Dr. Anita, you know, I, I am very happy that you have discussed this with me and I consider it an opportunity to work with you in this project. This is a phenomenal project that is very important and mostly needed in today's time in the world. So continue what you were going to say. Well, I have to tell you this one thing. When I got off the phone talking with you the first time, I can't, I was jumping, Why? you know, because you, you got it. So many people, I, I tell them and their eyes, you know, like, oh, and you said what, basically what you said. And I felt so validated in a way that I'm not, that I'm not alone in, in this. Cause sometimes it's very isolating when you do something, you build something kind of by yourself and needed people like you, because without you, and others, a few others that I've met now along the way, it's. I knew I'm on the right track. I know this is important, but it was so wonderful of you to share your thoughts and feel the way that you did. It's, thank you. So thank thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I mean that. So anyway, so basically, I'm going to keep this very, very short. So yes. we gave, um, and then they, the teachers mailed this back because now we're in pandemic. Yeah. So I just asked two questions. I asked them to, um, to and respond to the prompt when i began building bridges i never imagined i would and something that they got from it and this is what one student said at the end of the first year i'm sorry when i began working on building bridges i never imagined that i would be making new friends from a different school and religion i never imagined it because i've been at my school for so long i can't imagine making friends with a school i was unfamiliar with and then she followed this with her takeaway. She wrote, I learned a lot, but one thing I learned was that just because we are different in some ways doesn't mean we can't be friends. Wow, that is deep. That is very deep. And I'll tell you one more. I don't, one student at the beginning said, why would we want to meet them? They hate us. Mm -hmm. And then she said, they don't hate us. And now we're friends. Wow, you know this. I I can see this project joining hearts together, bringing hearts together, and yeah. that is where we need to start with the children, who are the leaders of tomorrow. They are the future politicians and teachers and professors, and I think this project will bring hearts together, join hearts together, and when they become the future leaders of tomorrow they will be able to establish that culture of kindness. What do you think? 
I hope you're right. It's, it's going to take a lot of people like you spreading the word and having your schools, organizations do it. And it's, it's a very easy process and people don't realize it. First of all, it has to be ongoing. A study was done in Israel with uh, students from Israel and, and, um, and um, all of a sudden my mind went. <laughs> anyway, it wasn't done long enough. It was done with uh, Palestinians, and it wasn't done long enough. But in the short term, it was working. But it needs to be done over time. It needs so to. So you can't just do it once and say, ah, we're done. So it is a commitment, but it's a commitment, like I said before, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't take any extra time for planning. And the differences are just overwhelming to me. I think and so. so so what I'm doing now, so to give you a little idea of where I am now, okay. I, I, with the help of another co-author, we created a um, guide to building bridges, mm -hmm. and it's it tells there are ten basic steps, very simple, how to set up the classroom so the students can hear each other, how to do building bridges, mm -hmm. how to get kids to have conversations so it's not question and answer, you know, so yes. that is very meaningful. All that is done. We are going to have a website. Um, I just finished a grant and submitted it, but no matter what, we'll have a website. And on the website, people will be able to go on, put their names in, and their school. So it won't be any personal information, what grade level. And each school will have a contact. So people could go on to the website, go to that page, find mm -hmm. people who want to partner, and they can also put their names to be a partner, call the school, get a hold of the contact person, who's been established, and they'll pair the teachers. The teachers can meet together through Zoom, through TV, whatever. They could be on the other side of the world, for yes. all we know. Yes. Um, and they can get to know each other, feel comfortable, and then start building bridges. So it's a very easy process. The website will be there. It's going to be, it's going to happen. I'm waiting for the grant, and if that doesn't, I will find a way to ha make it happen anyway. And uh, it'll be easy. It's a, it's a, it's it's so easy, and it just needs people like you saying, you know what, let's try it. And the kids, um, the, in the fifth, the principal or the teacher of one of the schools wrote to me. She said, Mike, all they want to be in the fifth grade now. They can't wait because they want to be part of the program. Yes, of course. And I got wonderful responses from the principal saying about the critical thinking that their kids were doing as a result, and how meaningful it was. And that was only. With each class doing it, one class I did it for a year, and the other for for half a year, and then the pandemic hit, and they were it was hard enough for them to do zooming with what they had to do. So. Uh, may God continue to bless you. It's really a pleasure again, and we will get a lot of things working on together. All right. God willing. God willing, and in Arabic we say Inshallah, God willing. Inshallah, God willing. Inshallah, God willing. Fens, the single largest specialty retailer of residential and office furniture, consumer electronics, home appliances, and household items in Trinidad and Tobago. At Fens, we offer a large selection of high quality products, honest and reliable service. We are passionate about serving you, and we're proud of the standard of excellence upheld by our knowledgeable staff, friendly delivery teams, and dedicated customer care associates. Visit Fens first, your friendly furniture appliance and electronic dealer since 1960. Royal Bengal Trading, importer, exporter, wholesaler of Bangladeshi Indo Pak groceries and spices. We specialize in various authentic Indian masalas, juices, flowers, rices, and spices. We offer exclusive brands as Ocean Pearl, Shan, National, Tilda, Himani, and many, many more. We're located at 36B Coroni Savannah Road, Charlieville, Shiguanas, Trinidad, and Tobago. You can call us at 473 4676 or call 476 3117. Email us at wahabdk at gmail.com.